Hello, everyone. Hello. All right, we have a couple of more activities. So another activity is for our letter G, and this will be our games. So I want to show you a couple of different games that we can make using either a paper plate or a cardboard box. So right now, some people may be getting different packages from Amazon or if you're ordering anything or if you have boxes at home. Um, I mean, I, I really only have this one, one box that I've been trying to use for a lot of different things. So I'm going to show you some different games that we can do with it. Okay. So we're going to do different games, one with our box, one with our paper. Okay. First, we're going to start with our paper. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a small hole just about this big in our paper making it circular. Okay, so let me go ahead and cut this hole out. Hang tight with me, ready? Ta-da! Okay, my hole did not come out as a beautiful circle as I intended, but please be careful when you're cutting, cutting into your plate. Um, I had to, you know, use a, a, a knife to cut in here, so, you know, make sure that's done carefully with supervision. Maybe for a parent or guardian will be better. Okay, so we cut a little hole, and then what do we do is I have a small piece of paper here. If you have a ball or a marble, that's even better. If you don't, then maybe half of a piece of paper so that it's around the size of this one. This one still might be a little too big. Let's take a look. We want it to be in a ball that's going to fit through that hole. So see, this is about a half of a piece of paper. If you fold the paper hamburger style. Okay, so we can get some nice crumple skills and some strength is needed to totally squeeze this into a tight, tight ball. You can also make a rubber band ball or a tin foil ball, um, or if you have a ball, like I said. Okay, so we want it to look small, tight, really squeezing it together, really using our fingers, our grasp, squeeze it tight. So it's a small ball, just like this. Okay, so the game just requires two-handed use and you can challenge yourself either to try to go around and get into the hole okay or oops hang on okay i almost lost my ball okay so either going around one side or the other and you can see it's actually not as easy as it looks especially if we cut the hole um got it especially if we cut the hole so it's not all the way along the edge, but a little bit higher. Nice way to get both of those hands working together. Uh, motor planning, right? We have to plan how much we're turning, coordination, right? And we're really trying to get it right into that hole. Boop. Okay, that's going around the edges. We can also go around the front, see if we can get it right into that hole. That's one way. We can turn the hole towards us. And now, see if we can almost basketball style, throw this ball into that hole. So no more turning. Ooh, that was a close one, right? If we have to make the hole a tiny bit bigger, we can. See if we can, oh, there we go, but that might have been cheating, let's see. Hey, there we go. All right, so also some motor planning, hand-eye coordination. Okay, what if this becomes too easy? It's a little easy just to get it right in there. That's a little too easy. So is there a way to make it harder? So we can make it harder, and here's a way we can make it harder. Okay, we can take a paper towel, um, toilet paper roll, sorry. All right, in our toilet paper roll, I want to cut this into 10 sections. So I'm gonna cut it in half first. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this into five. So again in half. Okay, and now two cuts here. One, two. Two cuts here, 
All right, so that's going to give us 3, 6. So this is going to give us 12, which is going to be even 2 extra. All right, oops, sorry, I don't know if you can see. All right, so let me cut this, and I'll fast forward you real quick. Okay, and once I cut them, here's how they look. All right, and now what I want to do is I want to glue them in a pattern. So a pattern that I want to do to get the ball going through them and into there. So maybe we'll start not with all 10. Maybe we'll start just with four of them. All right, so with some tape, And we could just slide some tape right here on the inside. This is actually too much tape. This would be good for two of them. So with some tape, just like this, okay, we can slide it in. So let's give this a try and see if it works. So for the two, one, two. Okay. So if I want to add some pieces, right, I want to make sure they're big enough. So maybe I want to put two on this side as well. So I'm going to do the same thing. So maybe I'll actually get five. So I'm going to do like this. It's going to be an even board. Okay, bear with me. I know sometimes I fast forward you, sometimes I make you watch while I am setting up and creating. Well, thank you for your patience. Oops. So, the good thing about tape is these can come right off. You can always make them permanent by gluing them. If you find a pattern that you really enjoy, Okay, let's do one more. All right, so now we can try a combination, getting it through different, different ones. Okay, and so this makes it even harder. Whew becomes like a like a puzzle to complete. See I'm just pushing my hole a little wider. Therefore not to make it too big. All right, if you want to make this even more challenging, we can number these. So maybe I want to do one, two, and then I want to do three, four, this one five. Remember, since it's tape, so it looks like this. Since it's tape, I can always pick it up and move it into different places. So check it out. So we have one, two, yep, and I have to go around to get to three, and four, and then five. Hey, got it. Okay, so that's a way to make it a little bit harder. We can get up to 10 of these or more but it's gonna to start to crowd the plate, okay? And then another thing we can do is we can take these off. Remember, we can always reposition them so that it's even easier if we want. Maybe we, we do a pattern that looks like this, or not even easier, just different. So maybe our pattern looks like this. So our ball has to travel. Through our numbers. Hey, that's cheating. <laughs> as, as you guys can all watch me. Hey, there we go. Okay, so you can set it up different ways. Remember, you can do more numbers. Or what else we can do, and this is still our paper plate, what else we can do is using our straws. Okay, using our straws, using our straws. All right, so I'm going to take straws and I'm gonna cut them up pretty short um, I think I'm gonna do all of them about 
one inch. All right, so let me pause you while I cut these up. Right, and I cut them up into about one inch, and it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. Okay, now what I can do is make a maze. So again, I can use tape so that I can always um, move it around if I want to, right? Once I start gluing it, it's gonna be permanent into one location. So maybe I wanna make a maze and I wanna see if I can keep it in that maze. So I can brainstorm how my maze is gonna look. Using my 10 pieces. And this way we can use the wall, which will be fun. And we'll start it over here. So maybe something like this. Okay, and this is just with 10 pieces, can always cut more, make a larger maze, really use your own creativity. Okay, so I'm gonna do it like this. All right, just as one to start with. So we'll have to start and get it here, up over the wall and in, okay? So hang tight while I glue this, or I'm sorry, tape this. All right, and because I have it taped, I can always lift it up and move it into different directions. So now we turn it into a maze. So here's where we start, okay? We have to go across our maze. All right, not too bad. So can always add these parts to it as well. Maybe before we get into that maze, um, to do like a one. This might be hard. Let's see. One. Two, this is gonna take some coordination here. Well, let's do it. Let's, let's go for the challenge, okay? Mixing it all together. Let's see if we can do it. We start at the one. Get it over for our two. I don't know. Okay. What about this? Start at the one. Ooh, took a little shortcut. Okay. Let's see. Get through our two, into our three, and then we utilize our mix. All right. So, just some different things we can do. Set it up differently. Um, and with the tape, we can always just pull it and remove it and edit it, add it different ways that we want to. We can do, you know, up to 10 of these pieces from toilet paper. We can move around our um, straws and, and set up different kinds of patterns, mazes, right? We can make multiple ways to go. And this is just two straws. So, you know, if we have three or four or five straws, we can really set up really intricate mazes. And I've seen some really, really cool ones. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. This is using our paper plate. Okay, next we are gonna do one using our box. So let's see if I can grab the box. Let me put my one, two, three on here. Let's see if I can grab the box. Okay, so for our box, we're gonna do a similar concept. We're gonna make one hole at the top Starting here. Okay, let me pause you while I make a hole. And we're back. Whoa, perfect hole. Okay, for this one, we can also crumple up a ball. Maybe a, a full sized ball will be fine for this. I have an actual squishy ball here. So, same kind of concept, right? We're gonna get our ball in here and see if we can move it around and try to get it into the hole. 
So let me see if I can move the computer so you can see a little better. Room for you. Hey. So, you know, lower a little, perfect. Okay, now we're in business. So, check it out. Trying to get our ball whoop, into the hole. All right, if this is still a little bit too easy, so now what we can do to make it a little bit more challenging is now I have a paper towel roll. So my paper towel roll, see if you can find two paper towel rolls, right? With your paper towel rolls, we're going to cut them in half. So I'm going to grab one more and I'm going to cut them both in half. Or if you just have one, or if you have a paper towel roll actually, you know what? You can make it as tall as you want. It depends on how you're creating it, but you can actually make it work with just one of these or even a paper towel roll. What we're going to be doing is just setting up bumpers. Cut it in half, cut it one more in half. Okay, and now what we're gonna be doing is setting up our bumpers. So we're gonna put two bumpers right in front. And we're just gonna use those two bumpers for now. The other two we can move to the side. So we're gonna have two bumpers, okay? And these we might need to glue. So let's see if we can find some glue. Okay, I'm going to glue these down. Give me a second. All right. And what I did was I added these two bumpers on here. All right, so these bumpers are going to need to dry. But now as they're drying, it means that when the ball is coming, it's not going to be able to fit through the middle here. So, so right away, it makes it a little bit more challenging. The ball doesn't just fit through the middle. The ball has to go all the way around to get in. Okay, so we have our bumpers. While those bumpers are drying, check out what else we can add. I have some cups. So same, similar concept of what we did with our toilet paper roll, where we made three or five different um, slots that the ball has to go through and we numbered it. We can do the same thing with our cup. So if we cut our cup, and I have a couple of them, but if we cut our cup into rings, right, we can probably make like, let's see, different size rings. We wanna make sure the ball fits through them. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can make six rings with one cup. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna make six rings. Hang on while I cut this. All right, cut them. So it came out to six rings. There's a little bit of styrofoam here, but it looks like the ball can get through even the smallest ring. All right, so now what I can do is, just like I did with the toilet paper rolls, I can just get some tape so that it's movable and tape these rings. Okay, so now it's gonna be even more challenging and more fun. Okay, so I tape the rings just like this. All right, so hang tight while I tape the rest. All right, and now we have six rings taped. So now we have added a whole bunch of things and we could do it any which way. We can do either just the boundaries or just the rings. And maybe we're doing it to see how many rings we can get through. So it's just a nice way to practice our bilateral skills, right? Bilateral coordination, tilting and moving this box, our motor planning, grading how much force to use to turn this box in order to get it from one point to the other, right? We can see how many of these rings we can get through. So maybe try, we have to take our time to try to get through different rings. And we have to tilt the box. Hey, and eventually we could get through to the end. Okay? We can even number these if we wanted to. And remember, since they're taped, we can always pick them up. And uh, 
move them into different positions, right? And this is just one cup that I have six of them. So if I really wanted to, or depending on the size of my box, I can make it bigger. I can add more components into here, right? So it looks like this for now. Okay, and to complete this, I would have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and to the end. Whew. All right, this is all if it's a one player game. Okay, so if we wanted to, we can add another bunker here maybe. And then, you know, we have to start to incorporate some bouncing to be able to get it over. Um, that's something that we didn't do originally before we started setting this up is the bouncing. Okay, but what I wanted to show you is that this can also become a two player game. Our um, plate can also become a two player game, kind of the same way this one, it's just a little bit smaller, the box is a little bit more fun. So let me show you. So we're gonna take our stacked pieces off for now. Um, so sorry, our cut rings. We're going to take those off. Okay. The benefit of using tape. And what we're going to do is we're going to make another hole here on the other side. So just about the same as our first hole, as close as possible. Okay, we're going to make a hole. So hang on while I do that. Now we have two holes. Now we use these other bunkers. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue down the two bunkers so it's parallel to the first ones. Hang on while I do that. And we are officially glued. And now what we have here is a game where two people can play. So it goes from a one person activity to a two person activity. And we can set up our paper plate kind of the same way before we do the maze, right? Just by having one hole on each side. And what we're gonna do to make it a two player game is we just have to do one flick at a time. So if this ball comes to stillness, all right, let me get it even. I don't know if we can still see. The ball is in stillness, okay? So we can do one tap person. So you can't see it's on the other side. Right, one tap a person, okay? And then the other person gets a tap, okay? Then the other person gets a tap. Oh, since it can bounce off the walls, it's a, a really fun game. Um, you can do it with a ball. You could do it with a paper ball as well. That one might be easier to control, All right? So if it's a paper ball, I just wanna make sure you can see. So if it's a paper ball, for example, doing one flick a person and trying to get it into the hole, trying to score a point. Hey, all right. If you wanted to add different challenges, you can always make it so that each person maybe has two. And what they have to do is they have to get it through a ring on either side. So each person has two turns. They have to get it through a ring and then score, okay? Or it's the other person's turn. They have to get it through a ring and score. Oops, all right, so just a fun way to make it a two-player game is like this. You can also do it with a coin. There's something called penny hockey. So I used to play this game and that's kind of where this idea stemmed from too. Penny hockey, you get one flick each. The board is a little different for penny hockey. You get one flick each. Each person gets one flick. You can bounce off the walls. You can do different things. And you basically just want to score in the opponent's um, goal. All right, so you can do this with coin, ball, any kind of different thing. And it becomes a fun game, right? And when we're taping our cups, then we have a lot of different options that we can do. All right, so we have our game here that we can play. This is our box, our cardboard box games, okay? As well as we have our 
paper plate, which we can use for games. All right, so some different games using a cardboard box or a paper plate. Okay, so see what kind of games you can make using this concept. All right, and with the paper plate, it would be another hole on the opposite side and basically just one flick at a time, maybe using the walls, maybe using a coin or a small ball, put up barriers also in the front, those um, uh, straws, <laughs> the name, those straws can be upwards for barriers. So that can make it a little bit more challenging, a little more fun. So see what kind of games you can make, either using paper plate, cardboard box. What other games can you make? Our letter G is for games. All right, through games, we get to practice turn taking and direction following, team skills, team building, communication, right? Skills of interacting and communicating between people, okay? Competitive skills, all right? And competition, it should be fun though, right? We should remember that it's not just about winning, it's about being kind to one another, taking turns, being patient, having fun, okay? Being being supportive of one another. So these are good skills that we can learn through different games. So here are some tabletop games. All right, so hope you enjoy our letter G games. What kind of games can you make? All right, thank you so much, everyone. I'll see everyone again next time. All right, bye-bye.